coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic, and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. It's brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. In it together and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, presenting Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to ColumbiaSC.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Services. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their lives. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Services at agapects.com and Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. Coping with COVID, brought to you by SCDHEC. In it together, the Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connections. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Good Friday afternoon to you. I'm Trey Taylor. And today we're coping with an important and critical critical topic, not only locally, but in our nation, gun violence and the community's response to events that are taking place tomorrow at the State House in Columbia, South Carolina. And we are going to address those issues and also the two events. Dr. Jaquetta Chapman is with Mothers of Black Boys. Jaquetta, thank you so much for joining us today. She's joined by uh, Dr. Jennifer Bishop with Bishop Speaks and Sarai Malone also is going to join us a little bit later on. Ladies, thank you. She is back. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having, having, us. Thank you for having us. Perry Bradley also joins us. His group, Building Better Communities, is another one of the organizations hosting an event this weekend. Thank you, uh, Perry, for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk with all of them coming up next as today we are coping with gun violence on today's Coping with Trey Taylor. But first, your COVID community updates. SC Farm Bureau has partnered with SC Agro Wellness to provide free mental health services for South Carolina farmers. Those who are having challenges dealing with stress can receive up to three virtual counseling sessions. For more information, you can see the information on the screen, 1-800-968-8143. They should mention SC Agro Wellness. And today is National Donut Day, and Krispy Kreme is offering guests a free donut of your choice. Plus, you can get a deal on a dozen glaze. Now, if that's not enough, if the hot sign is on, which why wouldn't you want to go to Krispy Kreme when the hot sign is on, you could also get a free hot donut now. All of that is not only going on today, so if you don't make it, you've actually got through Labor Day to check out this great deal on Donut Day. SCDHEC has your most up-to-date list of times, dates, and locations for COVID testing in and around South Carolina. Visit scdhec.gov for more information. They are actually upping their COVID testing and vaccinations because of the uptick in COVID. Uh, also, all of this information that I'm getting ready to give you is scrolling at the bottom of the screen so, throughout the show. So please check it out, post and share so we can get the information to the masses. Scrolling on the bottom of the screen, you'll also see information on where you can get five free self-COVID tests through uh, covidtest.gov. Also, vets and the VA you can get your COVID test and COVID vaccinations at the VA. Kroger Pharmacies is one of the many retail outlets that are offering COVID vaccinations and testing, along with CVS and Walgreens. Walgreens also still giving out free N95 masks. Now, the Comet bus system is also doing the same. Not only are they offering free rides to get your vaccination, you can also go by the uh, Comet bus station, their main location in Columbia, South Carolina, at the corner of uh, Sumter and Laurel Streets, and get free testing, and free COVID vaccinations. Now, if you or someone you know is having a challenge making your COVID vaccine, online registration help is available at Get Set Up. You'll also see scrolling at the bottom of the screen information about financial resources, including FEMA giving COVID funeral reimbursements. SC Bar Association and SC Legal Services has a toll-free number and website for rental and mortgage help. Lexington County still has a bill assistance program. 
SC Housing and Dominion Energy has rental and utilities assistance information. And if you or someone you know is having a challenge coping with COVID, they can contact SC Hopes. They have a 24-hour assistance line through the South Carolina Department of Mental Health. You'll also see information about several uh, employment listings that are going on throughout uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and of course, throughout the state. All of that information will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen. So please, again, post and share so that we can get the message to the masses. You're watching Coping with Trey Taylor. We are streaming live on the Taylor Made production page. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow. Not only will you be able to uh, get notifications as to when Watch Coping with COVID, which happens on Wednesday, sponsored by In It Together SC and the Diabetes Act, Council, but also on Thursday and Friday with Coping with Trey Taylor, uh, where we are streaming live. We're also streaming live on YouTube. Please go over there and hit the subscribe button. There you can find uh, two plus years of resources, information, and so much more. All of the interviews that we've done throughout the through two years, you can check that out on the uh, YouTube channel. We also have a presence on Instagram and also on Facebook. Hey, don't forget, um, if you uh, want more information on anything that we do with the show, uh, all of that information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And please don't forget to push this out. Just please post and share so we can get the message to the masses. Well, in the last 15 days, there have been over 15 acts of violence, both locally and nationally. There are two organizations uh, that are local in Columbia, South Carolina, that are doing events. Coming up after the commercial break, we're going to talk to the organizers and some of the participants in those events and discuss the community's response to gun violence. That coming up next on Coping with Trey Taylor. We'll be right back. Computers, they're a part of our everyday lives. But when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351. 5821. Hello, I'm Carolyn Sawyer, an entrepreneur and caregiver. Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Prediabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. This message brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of SC. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Coping with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Please go over to our uh, page on uh, Facebook, the uh, Trey Taylor business page, Taylor Made Productions, and hit like and share and follow so that you can uh, receive notifications as to when we go live Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then also over on YouTube on that page, please hit the subscribe button. Check us out also on Instagram and also on Twitter. We're talking about gun violence and the community's response. Uh, as I said before, in the last 15 days, there have been over 15 acts of gun violence, both locally and nationally. Uh, today, we're joined by Dr. Jaquetta Chapman. She is with Mother of Black Boys. Dr. Jennifer Bishop joins us also. She is CEO of uh, Rare Leaders and also Bishop Speaks. And Sarai Malone is a uh, mother, grandmother, and veteran. And she is also, unfortunately, a uh, victim of gun violence. Plus, Perry Bradley joins us with Building Better Communities. Thank you all so much for joining us today and also for uh, participating in this conversation. I'm not sure if Jaquetta is ready. So if we can put her down until she's ready to uh, join the conversation, that would be great. Uh, so I want to start with you, Perry. Um, why do you think there's such an increase in gun violence? Um, our society has changed. Um, we're just coming out of a pandemic and a lot of people are trying to cope with what they've had to deal with during that pandemic. Um, so when you have issues that, you know, we constantly go over again and again, such as financial um, instabilities, um, you know, those are the type of things that lead to gun violence. So we have to figure out ways to cope or actually counteract 
those um, things that have happened during the pandemic in order for us to actually achieve success in fighting gun violence. Right. So you are, um, you think it's, the increase is because of the pandemic. Is that what you're saying, Perry? Well, I'm saying coming out of the pandemic, you know, we have to give our youth something to do. And I don't mind, um, it causes a lot of damage. And I think that's where we are right now. Um, it's so much stuff that leads up to gun violence. People think that it's just about guns, but you have to look at what's the leading cause of the gun violence in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, Jaquette, I want to get you in the conversation. Thank you again so much for joining us. What do you think is is the problem? Why so? Why is it such an increase in gun violence? And listen, it's not, like I said in the, in the opening, it's not just locally, it's nationally. It is nationally. Trey, I think that um, our society has been... Um, uh victims so to speak with um covid i think covid had us locked down covid has has um taken away our ability to socialize and socialize in such a way that we are cordial we are now more aggressive i see it everywhere and i think that our children those who are committing these um acts of violence through gun violence i think that they are um uh, probably some some victims of of COVID. They're having to deal with COVID, the mental um, effect that COVID had on all of us. I think that that has something to do with it. So, uh, and they're in tune with social media, um, not just in tune with social media, but the influence of social media has a strong impact on those babies, or those children, or those grown people that are committing these crimes. That um, so much that they just act out in a way and not they're not getting the help they're not coping they're not coping this is their way of dealing with it and not knowing how to um socialize um properly so to speak i see dr aaron bishop says social um emotional that's exactly the issue that they, they've lost their sense of socialization they the only socialization they got was from this mm-hmm yeah. Uh, Sarai, I want to get you in here for a minute, but uh, since uh, I want to ask Jennifer, because uh, Dr. Bishop also says it's also a spiritual issue. So Dr. Jennifer Bishop, let me ask you, what, what do you think about that? Social, emotional, Je Jaquetta both and uh, Perry and uh, Dr. Bishop, your husband has said social and emotional, but he also said spiritual. So what is the spiritual issue? How does spirituality play into our increase in gun violence in our communities? Trey, we, we've lost the village mentality. We've, we've lost the village component. Uh, from the spiritual aspect, the church was a central part of how we got our legs up under us and how we were able to make strides when we were um, making the substance changes that we needed to across this nation. And so now, for whatever reason, Things have shifted in the direction that we are not able to handle. Mm -hmm. Our children are able to handle it. As adults, we have not been successfully handling it. So what do we do to bring the current of change back into a place where our children can see us be adults? We have tried to be their friends and that friendship has turned them um, down a direction that we, we, we shouldn't have gone. Yeah. So that village mentality that we lost, that we set aside because I didn't want you saying anything wrong to my child. And mm -hmm. I didn't want you to do this and this and this crab in a barrel mentality and all these other factors that came into play. It changed the dynamic of who we were when we had a purpose as to where we were going. Wow. So we must reset. Uh, we must come back and be a collaborative force to make sure that the changes we need to see that we must see in order for our community to move in the direction and 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 y'all this is beyond our community at this point it's not just about mm -hmm. us on monticello road two notch mm -hmm. road over here this has been become an epidemic right mm -hmm. it is a pandemic hits globally an epidemic hits in a region it has hit the united states in a way that other nations are looking at us and saying what in the world Mm -hmm. is going on in the United States of America when it doesn't happen like this in other countries. So this epidemic has to be controlled and we have to do it collaboratively. There is yes. no other way that it's going to happen. That's so right. I want to get you in here because you are a direct um, victim of gun violence, uh, unfortunately, and our condolences and I tell you, just heart bleeds for what you have experienced and are experienced uh, as a mother. What do you think? 
what do you think from from because you're in it you're on mute i think because we can't hear you all right we can't hear you sarai and i'm not sure why <laughs> all right so we we're gonna we're gonna go to you um uh Perry, I, I want to ask, uh, you guys are talking a lot about the, the kids, the environment, um, our communities. So do you think accessibility to guns has any, um, has, has any, is, is any reason for why this is going on also? Definitely, it does. Um, so one of the biggest things I could tell you is, you know, um, at some point, we as a society started buying more guns as we call it for self-defense, home defense, whatever. But we never took the time to learn how to properly as a whole um, store our weapons, um, responsible gun ownership. So what has happened is the kids, when they're going and breaking into these cars and, and going through these houses, they're getting free weapons, they're getting free guns. And so the more guns we've purchased for home um, defense, the more guns are out there available for them to steal. And the majority of the guns that are out in the streets right now are guns that have been stolen or sold you know, in the black market. All right. I think, uh, Sarai, you're back. Are, are we able to hear you now? No, nope, mm -hmm. we're not. We're not able to hear you. I'm so sorry. And I'm not sure why. All right. Aaron Bishop says when people visibly see um, the damage of guns, it should provide course correction. Absolutely. But it doesn't seem as though, I don't know if the government is uh, taking heed, uh, Dems and Republicans can't get on one accord. I don't know if people recognize what the problem is. I don't know if it's a situation of it won't happen in my backyard because people are continuing to be irresponsible uh, to your point perry with the guns that they're carrying jaquetta you want to jump in yeah Jaquetta? yeah definitely trey uh, can you hear me yeah. yes and i'm probably going to get some backlash for this for this because it's probably not politically correct but it is what it is um a lot of it is intentional a lot of it is intentional in terms of these gall these gun laws the government knows who's taking these guns. The government also knows who's causing the crimes. They're not putting um, restraints on um, being able to carry. In fact, in South Carolina, all can carry. So I, 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 that's just my three cents. And if we're not careful as a, a people of color, we're gonna kill each other. Hmm. That's Trey. My I, I stand for that. Trey, can I add something? Yes, please, Jeff. Um, one from the civil rights movement, and, and I'm sure we all remember or we know about Emmett Till. And one thing that his mother did uh, that was a transformative portion of um, the movement was that she displayed her son's br brutalized body. She said yeah. that I want to. I want the world to see what they did to my baby. Right. And perhaps um, the the savagery, the 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 devastation that those bullets do to our children has not been seen enough. It's a shame that these children from Uvalde will have to always remember that for the rest of their lives. Um, but the, the legislators, the persons who are making the decisions to keep these guns freely in our children's hands, the ones who are making the decisions that are impacting us on the ground, perhaps they have not seen the devastation that is done to recognize that this is something that is ingrained in our children's head that does not leave, whether it be the shooter, whether it be the victim. We have got to do something. We have to have this courageousness that Mamie Teal had to say, you have to see what you have done. Right. And right. whether you pull the trigger or you were an accomplice by the fact that you did not make the legislative uh, decisions, you did not stop the pieces that needed to be stopped so that this carnage can end, um, there has to be some hands-on parts to it. Imagery is what changes people's mindset. When you saw the devastation, that's when you said something. That's when your body, your mind had a, had a reaction to it. Words are just words at this point. Yeah. 
Yeah. People are scared uh, to go into a grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. Todd Caldwell says, uh, say that. Thank you, Todd. And thank you, Aaron, for uh, joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Please post and share so we can get the message to the masses. This is such an important conversation that we need to be having once again in our community and in our nation. Uh, Dr. Jaquetta Chapman joins us. She is with uh, Mothers of Black Boys, Perry Bradley with Building Better Communities, and uh, Dr. Jennifer Bishop with uh, Bishop Speaks. And uh, we had Sarai Malone on. She was having some technical difficulties. Hopefully, we can get her on the show because it's so important to hear from her as a mother who has experienced uh, gun violence. And there she is, gun violence in her home. Sarai, are we able to hear you? No, we're still not able to hear you. I would suggest this, Sarai, maybe just unplugging your headphones. Maybe your headphones are muting your mic. Try that. And then we're going to come back and see if we can uh, converse with you. Uh, let's talk about church and law enforcement. Where does the church, what is the church's responsibility? Jennifer, you mentioned the church a little bit earlier on. Let's talk about church. And then Perry, I want to go to you about law enforcement. The church is a critical component. It, it, it has always been the heartbeat, has always been the, the central component of our community. And we have deviated from that for whatever reason. And I think that if we reflect back to when the deviation happened, we, we may see the time period in which our trajectory to in a certain direction also went um, in a direction that we, we want to have a course correction from. So the church is central uh, within the church. We're supposed to commune together. That's where we come together as a community under uh, an understanding of how do we build? Where do we go? How do we motivate? How do we um, train? That's that's what the church was was about beyond the spiritual component because we're gonna we're gonna talk about Jesus, we're gonna talk about the scriptures, we're also going to equip you to go out and do what needs to be done so that our community can be all they can be. So if we don't have that component, which is lacking in a lot of areas, uh, we will continue to have the carnage that we're having. So we have to get back to basics, um, and 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 go forth as yeah. a youth. Perry, before I get to you, I want to ask you, Jaquetta, so to Jennifer's point, so does that mean what? The church needs to go beyond the four wall ministry and go out and church in the community, bring the kids in or bring the people in. What does that look like, do you think? Gen um, Trey, the, she, she's absolutely right in terms of the church has got to be active. But if we're honest with ourselves, the church has changed. The, the look of the church doesn't look the same way it did three years ago, five years ago. As, as social media becomes more a uh, part of what we do on a daily basis, people are not even really going to a, phys a, a physical, you know, brick and mortar building for church. They're doing it you know, by way of uh, virtually, or, um, you know, social media, um, some may not even go. And considering we just, you know, we just had, we're trying to get out of COVID or get over that. We didn't, most people didn't even go to church for what, two, almost three years. So we have clearly lost um, church. We lost the value. We've lost those foundations. But I'm not even sure if the foundation will ever be the same again, wow. considering church, because considering church looks different now than it did a year ago, two years ago. I know that my church, um, Brooklyn Baptist, um, now has Brooklyn Beyond. It's a, it's a whole different world, a virtual world out there that most people are not even aware of at this point, but it's a virtual church. So mm -hmm. I think we, 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 we've got to be creative in our approach and be a little innovative in terms of how we get back to the foundation. We need that foundation, but it has been lost over the, the last few years. So I'm, I'm not so certain um, what that looks like, but I know it's gonna take everybody. It's gonna take all of us uh, putting mm -hmm. our heads together and coming up with some creative way to uh, get the foundation back to where it was. Or just, you know, we have to uh, embrace this new way of doing things in terms of how our kids interact and what they're exposed to. Um, but we got to somehow or another infuse a little bit of, um, of our old ways of those traditions. The foundation is what Jennifer was talking about. We got to figure out how to get some of that back in there. 
because I'm afraid that if we try to just say, okay, scrap everything y'all doing, let's just go back to the old way of doing things. I'm afraid that we're going to have a lot of resistance and then we won't get anywhere. We're talking about gun violence and the community's response. That's Dr. Jaquetta Chapman. She is with Mothers of Black Boys. Dr. Jennifer Bishop with Bishop Speaks um, also joins us. Perry Bradley with Building Better Communities. I know you have a relationships, Perry, with uh, our mayor and law enforcement. Tell us how you feel you are getting supported by from law enforcement and if they are making the right moves. Um, well, you know, everything we do, we um, partner with law enforcement and trying to make sure that um, our community gains that trust back in law enforcement. And so teaming up with the mayor, teaming up with law enforcement, those are the things that you need. Um, people don't realize that, but unless everyone works together, it's not going to happen. Um, that picture you just showing, that's, that's what collaboration looks like. Not just BBC, not just law enforcement, but everyone together. And so law enforcement, um, they are making the right moves. Um, I don't know if you realize that um, Sheriff Lott just made a pledge mm -hmm. back to the community that says we're going to uphold the vows that we took when we first became um, deputies and so that is so important because building that trust back in our community is so important and you know at the end of the day um one of the things that law enforcement will tell you they can't do it alone they can respond to 911 calls they can react to what has happened but it takes us that village being proactive and the key part of that is being pro you know anytime you put pro in front of something that's positive so when we are proactive versus reactive, we accomplish a lot more. Right. Aaron Bishop says church cannot be Sunday morning practices as usual. Uh, mm -hmm. It has to be a lifestyle infused by mm -hmm. real life skills. Also, yeah. uh, Love McCray says she says she we have to invest time in prayer in our communities, in our families and in this country. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for your responses. Sarai, before we leave, I want to get you in here to uh to talk. We still can't hear you, though. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Look, Jennifer, can you just pray over us? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Let's all pray <laughs> towards <Arise> right <laughs> So, So listen, I, I know that you both, uh, both uh, Building Better Communities and Mothers of Black Boys are both having events tomorrow, Saturday at the State House. Uh, Jaquetta, first, tell me about your event. I mean, you know, I, I love that uh, we are, as you say, uh, Perry, being proactive, bringing people together. You're partnering with law enforcement. Listen, we got to do something. Tell us about your event, first of all, Jaquetta. All right. Um, so wonderful. Um, tomorrow, um, we're looking forward to meeting um, women, um, men, Children, anybody who wants to be a part, who's passionate about ending this gun violence um, tomorrow at June, at, I'm sorry, the South Carolina State House, June 4th uh, from 8.15 to about 10 at 8.15, we'll start with yoga um, just to kind of get ourselves in a position to um, mentally prepare for the prayer that's going to go forth at nine o'clock. We have some awesome, awesome, awesome people on um Board who's ready to just, you know, let's get this city rocking and rolling and let's pray over our people here. Um, Dr. Jennifer Bishop is one of our prayer warriors. She's going to be there and she's going to lay um, lay down some really, really good, good, good prayer to the Lord. And then we have um, Reverend um, uh, Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Jackie Jones Brown. She is the associate minister at Brooklyn Baptist Church, wonderful woman of God. And then also we have um, Pastor Nikki Moultrie from the Brook. If you've ever heard that lady pray, you've heard something wonderful. She is also a guest prayer warrior. And uh, we also have Nader Rutherford, who's going to uh, share. She's our coroner here in Richland County. She's going to share her experience and what she sees. Um, Dr. Andre Barnes, I keep calling him doctor, but Reverend, I'm going to speak that in existence, but Reverend Andre <laughs> Barnes is also going to be there. He's our motivator. He's our encourager. He's a community leader that sits quietly and he leads with power when he does yes. lead. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And then we have um, Chandra Cleveland. She's an investigator. She sees and, and she's probably one of the most um, 
active investigators I know with helping children, working with children in this city. Then we have Sarai, who we cannot hear today. You'll be able to hear her tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be able to hear her tomorrow if you're not able to get her today. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, we have BZ Baby, who is going to be moderating the event. She is a wonderful woman. She brings a strong um diverse audience out to um out to the state house tomorrow so i'm so excited but she's spiritual and i love it and i think people don't know that about her but i think that's what attracted me to her but no one on this panel is by happenstance they all are there because they are strong and they know how to pray and they know how to reach god and i feel like if we can turn we can get some prayers going we can turn this gun violence around in our city it's above the government we're tired of marching we're tired of rallying. We're not giving away this or giving away that. We want people to come with their hearts and ready to receive what God has for them on tomorrow. So we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at the State House at 815. All right. And after they finish with you, they can go to the other side of the State House, I guess. And yes. they'll go to Perry's <laughs> event. Perry, right. tell us about the Building Better Communities event at the State House. So one of the biggest things I want to start off with is, um, you know, I had this vision a while ago. Um, before the mall shooting, before the, the shootings even happened. And this event was actually supposed to be at um, Dr. Well, I'm going to say the, the bishops at their church. We had a plan there. And after um, the shooting at the grocery store and the shooting at the school, I got calls and said, hey, we need to take this to the state house, do a rally. Um, it's where Orange Day and make it real big and make it happen. And so that's exactly what we did. Um, Curtis Wilson, when I, I went to him and told him what was going on. He agreed to host it and we're doing a $300 shopping spree. And we just want to make sure that we get everyone there because I think everybody's on the same page right now. We need to put a prayer back in our community. Mm -hmm. And that is what everybody is pushing. And you know, at the end of the day, they always tell you, you have to try to do something different that you've never done before. And this is something we haven't done before. And it must be something positive because to see um, Dr. Chapman do it. And I just met her um, again, like in the studio and to know we're doing the same event on the same day at the same time at the same location. That speaks volume to me, at least. It makes me know that I'm on the right track. Yeah, and so many are. people have jumped on board. And I want to thank um, Dr. Bishop, both bishops. Um, they've been wonderful helping getting this organized and getting the set. And we have a great collaboration of people coming. Um, and it's going to be a fun event. It's going to be a rally to really get people's heart pumping, get the message out and bring everyone together. All right. So uh, Perry Bradley's event is um, the uh, Let's Pray Together. There it is. Let's Pray Together. Thank you, Charity. It's uh, at the State House and then the morning hour of prayer with uh, Mothers of Black Boys, uh, Dr. Jaquetta Chapman. Please go by and support both events at the State House. It's going to take all of us, as Jaquetta said, to uh, pray, to trust, to believe God. I want to get in Love McRae's um, comment. She said that um, that in, uh, she says, in adding to the events, event coordinators need to give strategies and walk people step by step how to take it beyond the events, how to implement, sustain, and collaborate and really bring about change, which Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, will show them the way. Amen, love. I love that. It's got to be more than just uh, a feel good event. We've got to come from the event with clear cut information strategies and information and in how to move our families forward move our kids forward we've got to we've got to do that aaron says thanks to uh, jaquetta and to um to uh, perry and thank you all thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for your commitment to our community we got to get sarai back on at some point because she's got a story to tell and i'm so glad jaquetta that you have added her to the mix because we need to hear from people who have actually experienced it. And so that we can know, you know, because I think sometimes we think it's a type of person that gets mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. targeted. You know what I mean? It's easy for us to say they came from this situation or their parents did or didn't do this, but a bullet has no name. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And can I tell you what Sarai did tell me? Um, and she can speak to this, but she told me, she said she was the mother 
who had all of the children at her house. You know, it, for me, it makes it feel safe. I'm safe when I feel like all the children are in one place and I can keep my eyes on them. She was that parent that had all the children coming over to her house and she had no idea that her son would end up someplace that she knew nothing about. So yeah. she was, she was not, she, she, so it's not, there's no, a bullet doesn't have a name and doesn't have a socioeconomic status. It right. doesn't have, um, uh, anything other than if any of us can, um, right. Can um, be affected well, like, by it. Like you said, girl, I mean, these kids that went to the to school that day, who, who would have thought we could go to the gross, the grocery store. You could go to the grocery store. You know, Aaron said he grew up in that, in that same community. So, it, it is the beyond, hospital. and Saray said in the private chat, she said she thought that too, that it could yeah. happen to us. It cannot possibly happen to me because I'm making all the right choices. Right. And that's what we need to do. Stop thinking this can only happen to somebody else. People continue to say that and it continues to happen. So right. again, thank all of you for mm -hmm. um, for leading the charge in our community, in our state, in our nation to do something about it. It's so easy to sit at the barbershop or at, you know, at the at the beauty salon and talk about it, but we got to be about it. Perry, you wanted to chime in? Yes, I want um one of the biggest things I don't talk about a lot is um how important and impactful gun violence is. When I was a child um playing at my grandmother's house and I forget, um a family member left a loaded gun out. Mm -hmm. Um I picked up that gun and played with it and was actually shot with that same gun mm -hmm. and you know and it's just this, yeah it's personal and you know i come from a family of educators my mom was a teacher my grandma was a teacher my my great aunt was a teacher my cousins was a teacher. so like you said it doesn't matter what side of the track you grew up on it doesn't matter where you're from it can happen to anyone and it happens in an instance and it's very very scary and very emotional and you people have no idea how scary um uh, how loud especially the child a gun going off and then actually being hit by a bullet mm -hmm. actually is and so you know i thank god every day for people that that were mentors that was were um counselors um the doctors and everything else because at the end of the day these are what's needed for us to get past this yeah. And, and Trey, can I add something? Yes. Yeah. Two things. One, uh, just step, taking a step back, when we talked about the church and the important role that the church plays, I, uh, as a woman of faith, I want everyone who's on the sound of my voice who will hear this recording to understand that it's not just the four walls um, at an address. We are the church. Every yes. the four of us sitting here, yes. Sarai, everyone is listening. They are the church. I can count the times on my hand probably that Jesus actually went into the synagogue. He mm -hmm. went around. He wants. He was amongst. And so yeah. we, if we are the church, and we take that initiative, that that desire we have to see a better community, to be a better community, then we can share that feeling and we can give it. So we must be what we want to see. Mm -hmm. We must. Uh, give what we want to have given back to us. So there's an accountability on us to be the change agents to give the course correction that, that needs to happen. And then the other piece was when uh, Dr. Jaquetta called me and told me about this important initiative. I told her absolutely yes, because I love Jaquetta and I believe in what she does. Mm -hmm. But I also shared with her, I said, Jaquetta, I, I, I pray a lot. We all been praying. Um, but there has faith without works is dead. Yes. And so what do we do after we come off okay. yes. 10 o'clock? I need right. to be able to tell someone this is how first, this is how you go and vote. This right. is how you need to understand the laws. Where are these guns coming from? How do we educate our children? Why yes. are our children so quick to pick up these yes. weapons? What has happened socially? Because in my son, first off, I own a child care center. And why am I having to do active shooter drills? with the right. three year old is a problem right. here itself. But number two, um, when in my age, we didn't pick up guns. We we had fisticuffs. We did something <laughs> different to express how we felt. But now it's, it's not like that. So yeah. what do we need to do? Are we having conversations with these children that are picking up guns? Right. Those are the kind of things that Dr. Jaquetta and I talked about when, when she first ex shared her vision for this day. And so to, I think that was Love McCray. Love McCray, yeah. If I said her name correctly, I apologize. 
But yes, we that that part working with Perry and whoever else we need to work with. That's right. What happens after we pray, what happens after we march? Where are we marching to? Who are we talking to? That that has to take place. Otherwise, That's we're going in circles. Right. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Jennifer Bishop, Dr. Jaquetta Chapman, uh, Perry Bradley, Building Better Communities. Don't forget their events. If we can get those flyers back up, their events start tomorrow morning at the State House. You can go to one and go to the other. Here's some powerful speakers and some prayer prayer warriors. And then uh, he uh, get some more information, education, inspiration for both of these amazing events. Um, Jennifer, I'm going to ask you to, I didn't ask you this at first, so I apologize because I'm getting ready to put you on the spot. If you can stay to the end of the show so that you can pray us out, I would yes, really appreciate that. Yes, um, and um, Aaron is uh, flirting on this show to you. Tell me, hello, and Dr. Jennifer Bishop, your comments were well stated. Now, J Aaron, you're going to text Jennifer that. <laughs> That's my blue thing. Yeah, because he might wear his wife. That's oh, my blue. Thank you to the house. Listen. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jaquetta. Thank you, Perry. And uh, we're going to come right back in just a short short with uh, Jennifer Bishop, who is going to end us in prayer. And of course, we're going to try to get Sarai back on uh, because we definitely want to hear from her and hear her story. Because as a parent, we need to recognize some of the things we need to do. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on Coping with Trey Taylor. If you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email booking at copingwithtraytaylor.com. That information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like SCD, heck, in it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with Trey Taylor. Javis Tax Services, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office, Attorney Byron Gibson. Also, the Comet Bus System, Black Pages Black Expo, uh, Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall, and Agape Counseling and Training Services. Next week on Wellness Wednesday, we're going to celebrate Friendship Day and Father's Day. We're going to have a conversation with some men in our community talking about friendship, how they handle stress, and what Father's Day really means to them. Then later on in the week, we'll talk about organ donation. And of course, we are going to cover early voting. Jennifer Bishop mentioned uh, talking about voting. Well, there is uh, some voting coming up this month in a couple of weeks. We're going to let you know about that. All of that and so much more coming up next week on Coping on COVID, Coping with COVID on Wednesday and Coping with Trey Taylor on Thursday and Friday. As uh, typically, I leave you with a reading from Jesus Calling or either on Conversations with God, but I cannot have such an, a powerful prayer warrior on the show and not have her to close us with prayer. So uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for saying yes at the last minute and please share with us what uh, the Lord lays on your heart. Let's, let's, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. In spite of everything our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, we give you glory because we know that you sit high and you look low. God, we are humbled to be in your presence. We are before your throne of grace, asking, begging, beseeching you, Lord God, to give peace to those who are in need, to give an understanding to those who don't understand what's going on. God, we need you now more than we've ever needed you before. We desire to be closer to you. We need to feel your presence. We need the angels encamped all around us so that we can march on to see what the end is going to be. We have vessels on this earth where they want to keep their hands to the plow and not look back. God, we're dealing with something we have never dealt with before, but we know that you will give us the strength from on high that we need to be who you need for us to be on this earth. We thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do. It's in your son's name that we pray and say amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer Bishop, for uh, closing us out in prayer. We appreciate you, beautiful. And just thank you and uh, uh, Dr. Aaron Bishop so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. All right. Thank you again so much for joining us today on Coping. Until the next time, I wish you peace, abundant blessings. Take care. God bless. Stay safe. And as Jennifer said, we've got to stay prayed up. We've got to stay prayed up, y'all. We got to stay prayed up. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have an amazing weekend. And I just want to say a big shout out to my brother who is celebrating his birthday in New York. Love, love, love you. See you, y'all. Can't hear.
we can heal, we can heal. Coping with stress, coping with strife, bring in hope for success, for improving our life. Coping beyond hoping to do more than survive, ways to live a healthy life. Coping and promoting learning what you can do, six ways to a better you.